Now I'm going to show you a few more tips for processing forms using this crocodile order form as an example. The user will pick the species and we deliver the crocodile. Although it's not actually legal to send crocodiles to people in the mail, so we'll do the next best thing. We'll show them a picture of the ordered crocodile straight in their web page instantaneously. All right, so let's look at our setup. We've got a really similar form like we had before. The form tag, select a button. And then down here, we've got our script tags. Now, inside the second script tag, I've set up this object, croc images, which maps species to URLs. And we're gonna end up using this later when we wanna show a picture of the crocodile that they ordered. And like before, I've got my pseudocode at the bottom that describes what I want to accomplish. When the user submits a form, we'll check which species they ordered and display an image of it. So let's start coding that. The first thing we want is the event for when the user submits the form. Like before, I'll just attach an event listener to the form and I'll listen for the submit event and pass it the callback function. And once again, we want to make sure that the browser doesn't send this form to a server and reload the page. So we want to prevent the default behavior. And we can do that by calling event.preventDefault. All right, so now we need to implement this JavaScript here. The first thing we want to do is check which species the user selected in the dropdown. So we need to find the dropdown in the page. Let's go up and look at the HTML to see how we can select it. This one doesn't have an ID um, and it doesn't have a class, but it does have this name attribute. And we can use a CSS attribute selector to find elements based on name. Let's do that. So I'll make a variable. It's going to store it. Oh. Start that with a dollar sign, croc species equals. Then for an attribute selector, we start with a bracket and then the attribute name and then the attribute value. So that'll find whatever element on the page has an attribute name with this value. So that should match this. All right, so is this selector unique enough to only find the dropdown that we're interested in? Well, within a form, a name should be unique, but theoretically, there could be multiple forms on a page, and each of those forms could have an input with a name equal to species. So it's not, this is not the most unique selector here. That means that we should scope this selector. We want to scope the selector so that it only selects drop downs with name equals species that are inside this form here. One simple way of doing that is to just put croc form in the CSS selector. And that just makes it a lot more specific and make sure it's only going to match things with that attribute name and value inside that form. There is another way of doing it that we prefer, however. Okay, so let me explain. When we listen to an event on an element, like here, jQuery makes that element accessible inside the callback function in a special way. It makes that element the context of the function, storing it inside this. Remember this from before? So that this is the DOM element. And it's, it's the DOM element that's this croc form here. So if we want to turn it back into a jQuery object, we can wrap this in the jQuery function, giving us a jQuery object. So that means since the submit event happens on the form, this should be the same as this. All right, so this is nice that we can reference this because it means we don't have to repeat the selector here because that's kind of redundant. We can say this, this is what we're interested in. 
Um, but we don't just want the form. We want that we want that drop down inside of it, right? Well, once we have a jQuery object, we can call find on that jQuery object, and that limits our search to only look inside this element. So we can take our CSS selector from here and pass it to the find method. And that should then scope this search to being children of this element. Okay, so this, I'm going to take it and put it here. And now, now it's scoped. Now I can be confident that it's only going to find things that match the selector that are inside the form that the submit event happened to. All right, cool, whew. So now we've got this croc species variable that's storing a jQuery collection with the dropdown inside of it. Once again, we want the value of that dropdown, the string representing the option that the user selected. So for that, we need to call the val function. So let's just make a new variable to hold the string and we'll reference the element and then we'll call val on it. And so jQuery will know that it's going to look inside that select, find the option that the user selected and give back the value, which is going to be a string, either freshwater, saltwater or American. Cool. And once again, if you want, you can console.log it at this point and make sure that it's working. Let's get to the fun stuff though. Let's display an image of the appropriate crocodile to the user. So first I will use jQuery to create an image just like this. And I'll give that image a width. And I will set the source using Atra. And here I need to decide on the URL. It should be whatever value matches the key in the croc image objects, right? So if they picked American, it should be this URL. And if they picked saltwater, it should be this URL, and etc. So the way we can do that is this reference that object, croc images, and use bracket notation and pass in the string, which represents the key in that, it's going to be used as the key in that object. So croc species. And that should give, give us back the appropriate value in the object. If you want, it might be easier to think of it this way, croc images, you know, if it was American, it's like saying this, right? Um, or another way of saying that, if we don't use rack notation, is this. It's all the same, okay? All right, so we've got this image, it's, but it's floating off in space, so we need to append it to the page. And I'll just go ahead and append it to the body. Okay. All right. So once again, our code is theoretically complete and it's time for you to do some quality insurance. Pause, <laughs> pause the talk through, order a crocodile and see what you get. And make sure you order a few different crocodiles to see that it shows different images. It would be an absolute tragedy if we accidentally delivered a saltwater crocodile to a user who wanted a freshwater one. Don't want to make that mistake.